Hello everybody. So yes, once again, me, Phil and Renna are together. We're actually off to JNS because I need some wet weather gear as you can see. So it was like, they're like, enough's enough, you idiot. Oh dear. Okay, so what's happened this week? I had a really funny moment I'll have to tell you about. Okay, so as you know, DRZ, 10 litre tank, not a lot of fuel. Uh, and it doesn't have a fuel gauge. And what I do is I set the trip whenever I refill it. And when it gets about 70 to 80 miles, I refill it, okay? That's great. Well, the other day I'm going through traffic and I'm trying, it was, it was heavy traffic. I was trying to correct my clock because it's an hour out because of the you know the daylight saving shit. So anyway, in the process of doing that, I accidentally reset my tr trip uh, when it was around 20 odd miles. So I thought, ah, damn it. Oh, it's okay, I can either go in and reset it to 25 or something, or I can just top it back up, re-zero it, and you know, I'll be all good, it'll be fine. I got sick that night. Yeah, that's when I got ill. I didn't think about it. Three days later, I get back on the bike. Uh, four days later, I think, something like that. And I'm, I look at it and it's, you know, it says I've done like 40, 50 miles. And I'm like, that's cool. Got plenty of fuel to get to Portsmouth. Go to Portsmouth on the way back. I look down and I notice it says 70 miles, which means, ah, oh, shit, I need to fill up soon. Well, of course, remember, it wasn't 70 miles. It was 90 miles because of the plus 20 that it already had. So I'm going down the fast lane in the pissing rain. Uh, no, sorry, the overtaking lane for some pedantic arse starts going, it's not the fast lane. You know what I mean? I'm going down that. I'm going fast enough to be sat in that for a couple of minutes. Um, okay, it was raining. Probably wasn't the most sensible thing to do. But anyway, I'm going along. And um, one of the things about the DRC is when it runs out of fuel, it doesn't give you any warning. It doesn't go like, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, It just goes, ah. And it did that. I then had to get across four lanes of traffic while having no engine to get any faster. So I'm literally, I'm decelerating the whole time. I'm indicating left. I'm looking over my shoulder and like trying to make sure there's some that people are like seeing that I need to stop. I have to lightly touch my front brake without actually braking to get the light flashing to give people an idea that something, something is not right at all. Basically, I ended up having to go with the hard shoulder. The thing is, I didn't realise at the time what had been going on. I was like, I'd looked down, I was like, no, I've got loads of fuel. Why? We wouldn't have cut out yet. Oh shit, what's this type thing? I pulled to the side of the road and as I'm getting onto that hard shoulder, I literally. I'm just like, ah, oh, you dick, you fucking dick, you didn't refill it, you didn't reset it. Alright, Phil. So yeah, of course, flipped it in reserve, bang, started straight up, got home. Well, got to the fuel station, you know, all was good. But the thing that pissed me off was the fact that I was like, I was like doing the international sign language of, fuck, I'm in trouble here, people, because I don't know how it. And, um, yeah. Basically, no fucker would pull over for me. None of them. They were all just sitting right next to me, like, what, what are you going to do? No, I'm going to come through first. I'm going to come through first. It's like, get oh, you fuckers. Stop being so selfish. Once I start getting below about 50 as I'm coasting and there's no bike noise or nothing, I think they're starting to realise, oh, hang on, something's not right here. I mean, I'm like, going, get me through, you fuckers. Oh, fucking hell. Idiotic moment. My fault. But hey, whatever, it's funny. It's annoying I wasn't on camera, but I had no voice at that point, so it was like no point having the camera on, really. My voice is coming back, as you can tell. I'm starting to feel better, feeling better, better. <laughs> Fucking hell. Derek has got a lot louder since, uh, and a lot nicer sounding since the new exhaust, but damn, it cannot beat that KTM Brab. I mean, hey, it's got an extra 300 cc, he's packing some power behind it, so what are you going to do? Oh yeah, of course, we're going to join S. I should mention, they changed the management, and I think they changed a few people in this store. It is turned around amazingly. Massive props to j and It is a really nice shop now, really cool people, so much so that I'm actually trying to get a job there. Yes. So go and tell j and to give Spicy a job. <laughs> I don't think they've got a position at the moment, but... You know what? It, oh, it's not, it's not exactly what I'm after, but it's in the bike world. That's that's brilliant. That'd be cool. Grommage. Always grommage. Phil was checking out the grommage.
It had to be done. <laughs> what a bunch of kids we are. Big kids from big toys. Whoa! I can't compete with that, Phil. I just can't. He's getting blown up. Now this is the thing. What is doing that? Is that negative pressure type thing that's causing it to expand? Or is it actually getting filled with wind? Who knows? Ah, it's a fucking overtaking lane. Overtake or get out of it, you People seem to take it in a really negative way. Why would you want to fall? Why would you want things that you've been working on for so long?